Bigger. To the Minister of Finance, does he stand by his statement, quote, we came into office with a very sound plan to lift New Zealand's economic performance? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, I certainly do. If there was anything we underestimated, it was the size of the mess left by the previous government. We probably weren't quite aware of just how much damage nine years of economic mismanagement had done to the productive capacity of this economy. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, does his very sound plan include putting 50,000 more people out of work, cutting real wages by $9 a week at the median, leaving most Kiwis worse off after the tax switch, and now he trumpets controlling inflation because households have nothing left to spend? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the plan includes uh, getting the, this economy restructured to fix the damage done by that government, uh, which was exacerbated by a worldwide recession, so that we can get through protecting people from the sharp edges of that recession, but raising our long-term economic performance. And I'm pleased to say that the government's plan is on track with extensive infrastructure investment, uh, extensive review of the regulatory settings, lifting the productivity of the public sector, increasing support for business uh, and innovation, and reforming the tax system. The Honourable David Speaker, Cunliffe. to the Minister, does taking the sharp edges off recession include putting power, rent and food prices up by 1.1 per cent in a quarter, by then introducing GST to push inflation up over 5 per cent and leaving working families worse off with wages going down and prices going up. The Honourable Billings. Well, Mr Speaker, I know it doesn't suit the members' leadership campaign, but in fact real wages, real wages are rising. Wages are going up faster than prices. Point of, point of the order. Tax... The Honourable Trevor Miller. Mr Speaker, coming from someone who got 20% in the no, no, order, order, that's order. a bit rough. Order. order. Now, look, I say to both sides of the House, questions today have been mostly out of order, and maybe I should have ruled them all out. It would have saved an awful lot of time wasting. And answers have been absolutely unnecessarily gratuitous at times, especially the first answer to that primary question. I didn't stop the minister, but I was very close to stopping him. The question, primary question was dead simple. Did the minister stand by a statement? We didn't need all the gratuitous comments that came in that answer. How could I stop then the, the, the Honourable David Cunliffe when he put a whole lot of unnecessary statements at his following question? And we just see how question time just goes from bad to worse. And maybe I'll have to start getting tougher and uh, stopping uh, gratuitous answers when they're unnecessary and stopping uh, ruling out questions that are just totally out of order. Now, I'd rather not interfere like that, but today has just been very unsatisfactory, totally unsatisfactory. But then points of order shouldn't be raised in that manner either, I say to the Honourable Member. Now, uh, I think we'd heard enough of that. Has the Honourable Member got a further supplementary question? Mr Speaker. Point of order, Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Greens very much appreciate your attempts to uh, keep order in the House. Um, I just ask that when you say both sides of the House, I just make the point that actually the ACT Party, the Māori Party and the Greens have uh, done our best to maintain order in the House and because uh, we want to hear the questions and the answers. Can I... Can I give myself? A, uh, can I rebuke myself because the honourable member is quite right? I have not had problems at all with the Green Party, the Maori Party, and the ACT Party today. I must say it has been National and ACT, the, uh, National and Labour that have been uh, of, uh, very noisy today. And, and, uh, and but it, what troubles me is the quality of the questions and the answers. I don't mind the House being uh, at times robust, but to me the quality of questions and answers has deteriorated significantly. And I'm contemplating doing something about that because I can't stop ministers giving highly political answers when questions are highly political, when they contain mostly political statement. But where there are straight questions, as there were today, uh, I regret that I should have stopped some ministers in their tracks before I did, because some of the answers were unnecessarily gratuitous. Uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe, supplementary question. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, how can he maintain that his tax switch leaves the vast bulk of New Zealanders better off when those figures show that they have already faced a 2.4% increase in the price of food, a 4.4% increase in local rates, 
and a 2.8 per cent increase in power prices, with the prospect of further government-imposed price increases yet to come. The Hon. Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, because it's correct, on the 1st of October, uh, people on national superannuation, on benefits and on working for families all had their rates adjusted to compensate for the increase in GST and for those who are in the workforce they have had tax reductions, income tax cuts that are larger than the increase in GST and those are matters of fact, not speculation. Simon Bridges. Supplementary to the Minister. What steps has the government taken to pull the economy out of the recession that started in early 2008 and onto the road to recovery? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, in the first place, this government has, uh, absorbed, has supported the economy through recession by running fiscal deficits, and this year, this year the cash deficit will be $13 billion. Uh, that's money we are borrowing overseas to pump into infrastructure projects that support jobs, uh, and to maintain and improve uh, public services that were run down under the previous government. We have also reformed the tax system with across-the-board personal tax cuts. We have taken steps to lower the future debt track. We have reprioritised $4 billion of low-quality spending from back office and bureau bureaucracy into frontline services such as education, health and law and order plus a whole range of other initiatives uh, which would take me too long to outline. Simon Bridges. Minister, what alternative approaches has he seen that would threaten the economic recovery and leave New Zealanders worse off? The Hon. Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I have heard of one approach which was out of, out of step with economic policy right across the developed world, and that is the New Zealand opposition promising borrow and spend. Uh, and if there's... Order. Everywhere else Order. in the world, Order. Order. are promising Order. to do the other. Do the opposite. Now, the minister might tell me why I should not ask him to leave the chamber right now. Because I was on my feet, and the minister made no attempt to resume his seat. Well, the, the members indicated, the ministers indicated, and see me. Ministers answering questions should actually address the speaker, and then they would see the speaker when, I, when the speaker gets to his feet. Now, it would be unfair today because of the uh, shambles today to pick on one minister, but I warn ministers, I will not tolerate this further. I will not tolerate patsy questions being used to attack the opposition. If a member out the back, uh, in the back bench is there doesn't want to leave the chamber, they'd better be very careful. And it is just, today has been just totally waste of time in terms of, of of question time. Just a massive, it has been, in my view, very unsatisfactory. And I want members to reflect on it, because I'm certainly not going to tolerate it as Speaker. Uh, and and I, intend, I intend making sure this does not happen again. And I make it very clear to members, to ministers, where there is a straight primary question, I will sit a minister down immediately where they attack the questioner or the questioner's party on a straight primary question. Where supplementary questions contain political comment, there is obviously licence to inject political comment into the answer. I'm not going to stop ministers doing that because I want the discipline then to be on the questioners to ask decent questions to hold ministers to account instead of making stupid political statements. But I mean what I say and I just do not want to see today repeated. Uh, question number 10, uh, Sue Kedgley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A question for the Minister.